that I'm still holding to the truth after all these years. Amen. Hallelujah. I've known the Lord for 40 years, and He's still as real to me, Brother Sleece, today as He's ever been. Amen. I don't feel cold, indifferent, or, or, or dry, or bored of Him. Amen. He still lights my fire. He still excites me today. Amen. And if you don't feel that way, you can. Yeah. Amen. You can feel that way. It doesn't have to be just some whole hum, yeah. just some dried out thing where you just go through the motions. You can have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Not just a Sunday morning thing to where you go just to appease your conscience or to make yourself feel a little better. You can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. He's more than a story today. He's the King of glory. And I'm so glad today that I know, that I know, that I know that He is real. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I didn't, it doesn't take a whole lot to get me. Well, I guess it does. He is a whole lot. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not belittling Him. But I don't have to have some new fad. Jesus is still enough for me and mine. Amen. Jesus is still enough. I don't have to have some new catchphrase. Jesus is still enough. Last week we talked about the last days. And this week we are closer than we were last week to the end of time. As each minute passes, Brother Tyler, as each day goes by, we get closer to the end. And I've often heard the phrase, what in the world, I and mean, you may have said it, I've said it probably, what in the world is, is this world coming to? It's coming to an end is what yeah. it's coming to. Yeah. Amen. The next time somebody asks you, what is the world coming to? Tell them that it's coming to an end. That, Amen. Right. It is coming to an end. Mm -hmm. And the more I read the words of Jesus, and not just Jesus, but the Apostle Paul and John the Revelator in the book of Revelation, the more I realize how close we are to the coming of the Lord, how close we are to the end of time. And last week we talked about the different things that we're seeing going on today. We talked about how that today, in the day that we live in, that we live in times of danger, danger, dangerous times. Perilous times, the Bible says, that in the last days perilous times shall come. And we read what perilous means. It means dangerous. It means a, a time of fierceness, a, a time of danger. We read about evil times. The Bible tells us to redeem the time because the days are evil. I wonder how much time we wasted this week. Probably a shame for us to try to figure that out. We waste a lot of time. But the Bible says to redeem it, or in other words, make good with the time that you have. Don't waste it. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. So we live in perilous times. We live in evil times. We live in troubled times. Jesus would say over there in the famous chapter of Matthew 24 that we would hear of wars and rumors of wars. He said, but be ye not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Paul said we are troubled on every side. So we live in troubled times today. We live in fearful times. The Bible tells us that in the last days that men's hearts will fail them because of fear. Fear of what? The things that they see coming upon the earth. When you turn on the television, and, yeah, I always get this sick feeling in the pit of my stomach when someone calls and says, are you watching the news? Because it lets me know that something's going on somewhere and it's on the news and it's not good. On the uh, September 11th, whenever the planes hit the towers and whenever they attacked the terrorist attack through the airplanes, we were laying carpet in the church over there on island. Me and Brother Bill and a Baptist brother, and I'm not sure who else was there, but Someone pulled up in the driveway and they ran in and said, have you seen the news? Have you heard the news? And we said, no, we, we were here at the church laying the carpet and they said that we've been attacked by terrorists. And it wasn't long, maybe 15 minutes, someone else pulled up in the parking lot and they ran in there, won't know if we heard the news. And we hadn't, of course, but or we had then by word of mouth. But I remember that feeling that day and I remember me and Brother Bill and whoever else was there, and I know the Baptist brother, Brother Robert Pierce, and and uh, another man, I think, was there. But we all got on our hands and knees there in the sanctuary of the church over there in Ireland. And we, 
we all begin to pray and seek the face of God and ask God for His mercy. Perilous times. Dangerous times. The other day, whenever the bombs went off in Boston at the marathon, I got a, I got a call and they, someone said, are you watching the news? And I thought then, I thought, oh no. Perilous, dangerous times. Fearful times. Amen? Fearful times. And not just not because we're at war per se with a certain country that you know that, that we're fighting against, but it's more of a religion. It's more of a, 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 a what the, they call it a holy war. It's far from being holy, but you know what I'm talking about. It's an ideology. It's a belief system. It's a it's a religion that that uh, adheres to violence and death and that it's in other words they're not attacking you because of something you're doing to them they're just killing you because of what you believe and who you are and what the country that you're from they're just killing you because they consider you an infidel so we live in dangerous times times when people are scared to go to public events like i told you last sunday there was a time whenever i was a child and it's not been that long ago we would go to bed and we would leave the front door open. The screen door would be latched maybe, but that was it. Not anymore. Now today people are afraid. People are afraid. Fear has gripped the hearts of man. And Jesus foretold of that whenever He said that in the last days men's hearts would fail them for fear, for looking after the things which are coming upon the earth. So we looked at how times are dangerous. We looked at how the times are evil. We looked at how the times are troubled times and fearful times. But thank God He doesn't stop there. Amen. What a, what a depressing book this would be today. If all it had in there was times are going to get rough, they're going to get rougher, and ain't going to get no better. Amen. But thank God He puts more truth in there. Thank God that in the, in the days whenever, yes, times are troubled, times are dangerous, times are fearful, times are evil, evil seducers are waxing worse and worse. Man flaunts his sin in the face of God and doesn't even blush. Gay pride parades marching down the streets of our city. What used to be a shame. What used to be a shame for people now, they flaunt it openly before God. Football player Tim Tebow, and I don't know the other guy's name that I'm going to tell you about, but you might have heard about it this past few days. Tim Tebow took a lot of criticism because he would kneel beside the, on the sidelines there and pray. There's no place for that in sports. He would take a lot of criticism because of his faith in God. Then we have a basketball player, I believe it was, that came out of the closet and announced that he was... And they're all patting him on the back for how brave he is. That's the kind of world we live in today. When you're a Christian, you're a fanatic. Whenever you're an abomination, whenever you're doing an abomination in the sight of God, then you're okay. That's the kind of days that we're living yeah, in. crazy. But thank God He doesn't stop with the fact of the times that we're living in. But He also says that we have a comforter today. We have a refuge today. We read over there in Psalms, the 91st chapter, the first verse. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. So yes, we live in dangerous times. Yes, we live in troubled times. We live in evil times. But thank God we have a God today that is alive and well, Brother Sleese. He neither slumbers nor sleeps, Mama. He's still on the throne. I know it may look out of control because that's man's doing. His free will that Sleese talked about. Somebody asked me this week, why is God allowing this to happen? Everything that happens is not because God wanted it to. It's because of mankind kind that makes the wrong choices in life. Mm -hmm. It's not God's will that abortion goes on, but it yeah. goes on because of man's will. Amen? It is not God's will that somebody walks into a schoolhouse and pulls out a weapon and begins to open fire and kills our babies. It's not God's will, but it's because of man's wicked choices. Mm -hmm. Amen? Everything that happens, you can't say, well, it must have been God's will or it would have happened. No, man makes the wrong choice. Man chooses the wrong thing. But God is still on the throne today. God will still have the last say. And not only does His Word tell us how that in the last days things will be bad, it also reassures God's people, those that have their faith in Jesus Christ,
That all things work together for the good to those that love God and are the call according to His purpose. That He is still on the throne and that if we'll put our faith in Him, regardless of what this life holds, we will come out victorious in the end. He lets us know that we have a refuge today. He lets us know that He is most high. He lets us know in Psalms, the 91st chapter where we read last week, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. In Him will I trust. And one of the last scriptures that we read last week was in Psalms, the 20th chapter, the 7th verse. It says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. That secret place that we're talking about today. I told you last week that the ark only had one door, only one way in. The tabernacle that we talk about so often had one entrance, one way in. There's only one way to heaven today. And that way is Jesus Christ. There's only one way into the secret place that we read about in Psalms 91 and 1. The secret place of the Most High. And that is through the name of Jesus Christ. No other way to get in there. So let's look for a moment, if you'll turn with me to 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. Not going to hold you no longer, a couple hours. 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. Let's look at someone who knew about the power of of the name of the Lord. Let's look at the man who wrote the majority of the Psalms that I just read you from that said some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Let's look at David here as he stands in the tent of Saul, King Saul, 1 Samuel 17 and 39. Now remember, you remember how it goes. Jesse called David in from the hillside and said, I want you to take your brother some food. They're down there at the battlefield. So David comes in and he gets food and he heads down that way. And when he gets down there, he doesn't find much of a battle going on. What he finds is the Philistine army making fun of God's people. What he finds is a champion by the name of Goliath making fun of God's people and belittling their God. What he finds is the Israelites hiding in a foxhole from the enemy. That's what we find today. That's what we find in the year 2013. We find the devil making fun of God's people. We find the devil belittling our God. And we find most Christians hiding in a foxhole today. Afraid to stick their head out. Afraid something will happen. That's what David finds. David goes down there and he finds, what does he find? He finds some men that are trusting in chariots. He finds some men that are trusting in horses. But thank God, to, because see, compared to the Philistine army, compared to the giant that they were facing, if when they compared their strength to his strength, they knew it wouldn't work. So they were trusting in their own strength. Trusting in their own army. This had driven them by fear into the foxhole to hide from the devil. Same thing will happen to you today. If you think you're going to take on the devil by your own strength and your own carnal way of thinking and your own works and in your own power, you better find you a foxhole to hide in because he's fixing to take your head off. Amen? You cannot take on the enemy by yourself. That's what these men of Israel were trying to do. So David gets down there and he finds them hiding from the enemy. He finds men that are trusting in chariots, that are trusting in horses, that are trusting in their own military abilities. And whenever they compare what they can do to this champion that the Philistines march out every day, same time for him to beat his chest and belittle God's people. Well, when they compare themselves to him, they hide in a foxhole. And that's what David finds. David finds God's people hiding. But thank God today when David went down there, he didn't trust in the chariots. He wasn't trusting in the horses. No, he remembered the name of his Lord. It would have done these boys some good 
if they could remember the name of the Lord. But they were so afraid because it had compared their strength to His strength. They had compared their force to His force. They had compared their experience in battle, maybe, to His experience in battle. Because He was the champion. He done whipped a bunch of them. Amen? This was the, was the Muhammad Ali of the Philistines at the time. Amen? And they, they, were, they felt like they weren't anybody. They were scared. So David, when, while he's there passing out the sandwiches, he hears this Philistine walk out there and say, Hey, what are you going to do, you bunch of little punies? You're not... What about your God's nothing and, and, and He's belittling them and He's berating them and He's putting them down? And David says, wait a minute, what's going on here? What are you, why are you allowing this uncircumcised Philistine to defy the name of our living God, of God's army and the name of the living God? And they didn't have much of an answer except for David, shut up, you don't know what you're talking about. David, this man's strong. You don't know what you're talking about. This man's a champion. You don't know what you're talking about. The trouble was, he did know what he was talking about. They didn't know what they were talking about. They were comparing their strength. Why do you think the spies came back from the promised land with the report, the ten of them, with the report that we cannot do it? Because they compared themselves to the enemy. Instead of comparing their God, Brother Sleese, to the enemy. Amen? If we can get our eyes off of how big our enemy is and get our eyes on how big our God is, we would realize our enemy ain't so big after all. Amen? That was what was wrong with David. He been out there on the hillside. He's holy roller. He been out there on the hillside playing his harp and singing songs to God and, and having a having a personal relationship. If you don't have a personal relationship with him today, you don't know how big he is. Yeah. You don't know how powerful he is. Yeah. You don't know how mighty he is. But once you get a personal relationship with him, once he becomes your bridegroom, once he becomes your lover, once he becomes the one that you have set your sights and your soul and your heart on, you realize just how big God is. Yeah. And the enemy fades in comparison to that. So David had not been indoctrinated, which with these men probably came down from the top because where was Saul? He was hiding in his tent, so he had probably, you know, led them to believe the same thing. We can't take this army. We can't take this man. And that's what the ten spies came back and told Moses. They said, we can't do it. You know what they, what they said? They said, compared to them, we're like grasshoppers. Yeah. Amen? So it lets us know they weren't comparing them to the size of their God. They were comparing the Canaanites and all the other ites over there in the, in the promised land. They were comparing them to themselves. Mm -hmm. If you look at your situation today, and then you look at your own abilities, you're going to be finding yourself a place to hide. Yeah. Because you're going to realize that you are not enough. Yeah, really. David knew that he alone was not enough. Mm -hmm. But his, his reasoning and his thinking didn't stop there. I know I can't do it. Yeah. But I know he can. Yeah. Amen. I, it's like the Apostle Paul said, I am persuaded that he is able to keep it. Paul knew he wasn't able to do it. As a matter of fact, Paul said, I'm so disgusted with myself. That which I want to do, I wind up not doing it. Those things that I don't want to do, that's what I wind up doing. He realized he couldn't do it. As great of an, as an apostle as he was, as great as his conversion was, as great as his faith and his knowledge of Scripture was, he knew he could not do it. But he said, I'm persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that. Listen to me. We all face giants in our life. And the sooner we realize we are not able, and the sooner we realize that He is able, the better off we'll be. Yeah. Amen? Nothing is impossible with God. So we find David going to Saul. They took him to Saul whenever he said, Hey, I'll whip this Philistine. So they take him into Saul's tent. Saul's sitting in there sucking on some grapes or something. He's scared to half to death. And he tells David, he said, hey, you know what? Well, here, if you're going to go, at least put on my armor. Mm -hmm. See, Saul still trusting in the weapons, carnal weapons of warfare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the chariots and the horses. The chariots and the horses, exactly. Mm -hmm. We see Saul's frame of mind. Yeah. He's not thinking about the Lord. Mm -hmm. 
He's not thinking about the God of Israel, amen, that brought them across the Red Sea, that delivered them out from under the heavy hand of Pharaoh. He's thinking about his armor, mm -hmm. his weapons, mm -hmm. his army, his men. He's trusting in chariots and horses. Mm -hmm. But David's standing there in the middle of his tent and he remembers the name of the Lord, amen. Mm -hmm. He tells Saul, he says, this stuff won't do. But I'll tell you what we'll do. There was a bear that came out and tried to get my sheep. And guess what? The Lord delivered him into my hands. There was a lion that came in and tried to devour. But the Lord delivered him into my hands. I can't take your armor, Saul. But i tell you what I will do. The Lord will deliver this Philistine into my hands today. The Lord will. You may trust in chariots. You may trust in horses. But you count on a broken stick today unless you put your trust in Him. I will remember the name of the Lord. So David, listen to what he says. 17 and 39. And David girded his sword upon his armor. Now he's standing there in Saul's battle gear. And he essayed to go for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off of him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. You see, I can't fight this battle that I'm facing with your power of positive thinking. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I can't fight this battle that I'm facing with your name it and claim it garb. Amen. Mm -hmm. But I tell you what I can face it with. I can face it with the one that brought the Hebrew boys up out of the fiery furnace. I can't face these perilous times uh, with my flesh and trusting in chariots and horses. But if I remember the name of the Lord, uh, we can face these dangerous times. Uh, we can face these perilous times. Uh, we can face these evil times, these troubled times. We won't find ourselves gripped with the spirit of fear, hiding in the foxhole, afraid the enemy's going to do us in. Because we will realize... Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So David says, I can't take this stuff. And David put them all off of him. He took them off. These, these things won't work. This, this shield that you've given me, that won't work. This, this sword, this sword. I could use some better props. You know, there's a... There's a uh, a preacher over there in Oldsboro that preaches out of a bird's nest and everything else. I, I could use some fancier props. This sword you gave me. <laughs> this sword won't work. I can't use that. Oh, but I can go forth in the only weapon that I know works, and that is the name of the Lord. It would do us good today. If we took and threw aside our best life now bestsellers, amen? If we took and threw aside your power of positive thinking, if we took and threw aside the, the, uh, the, uh, the prosperity doctrine, the name it and claim it, if we put aside today the gospel of self-esteem and decided to go forth in that which gave the church the victory to start with, and that is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. The name of the Lord. So David throws all this to the side. and Stay with me. David throws all this stuff to the side and he took his staff in his hand and he chose him five smooth stones. Now we've talked about the staff before. How that this was more than a stick. How that they would carve in there things where God had done. No doubt if that was the staff he packed, no doubt on there it had the day that the Lord delivered the lion into his hand. Delivered the bear into his hands. Mm -hmm. The times that God had done great miraculous things. Mm -hmm. Amen. The staff. The reminder that God is more than able. If you've forgotten today that God is more than able, pick up the staff yeah. and read. Amen. Yeah. If you've forgotten, if the enemy has convinced you today that God just ain't enough, pick up the staff and read it. Amen. No truer book ever written, no more powerful book ever written today. You'll find no greater truths anywhere than between these pages today. Pick up the staff and see where God split the sea before. How God delivered from the fire before. So David picks up his staff and he goes down to the brook. I guess he had to pass by that way to get out to the giant. And he picks up five smooth stones out of the brook and he put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip, 
and in his slang was in his hand, and his slang was in his hand, I'm sorry, and he drew near to the Philistine. Now he stops at the brook and he gets five smooth stones. You won't find anyone that has the, the exact answer on this because all of it, the Bible doesn't say why he chose five. Some of the scholars will say, well, he chose five stones because he needed one for Goliath, and then Goliath had four brothers who that if, when, if he did kill Goliath, they would come after him. So he needed five stones for that. One of the uh, scholars said that it represented the number of grace. One of the scholars said it represented the first five books of the Bible. Another said that he took them just in case he missed with the first one. Well, I could swallow that one if he was trusting in the rocks to begin with. Amen? But he wasn't. He was pretty confident that the name wouldn't miss. Amen? Hallelujah. But anyway, somebody said, well, maybe he had a slingshot that held five rocks. <laughs> oh, and I'm not, I'm not, if somebody threw this one in, and I'll throw this one in for you. And don't give me any calls or any emails saying that I've got some kind of new doctrinal proof out there for this, because I don't. But it just strikes me kind of strange today that in the last days, and God knows about the last days, right? How many people believe that God has foreknowledge? He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't, but He does. He knows what's going to happen 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 years, 1,000 years from now. God knows. Here we stand in the last days, and do you know what the most used name for God's Son for the Savior of the world is Jesus. I realize that's the English translation of the Hebrew, the Jewish name. There's, there's a name, his name, Yeshua, and, and, and uh, some of the translations call him Joshua. And anyway, but the most recognized name for the Savior in the last days is J E S U S. I realize that you may shrug that off as some kind of Sunday school song that we sung about the five stones being J-E-S-U-S, -S, but you might want to stop and at least give it a little merit. At least think about it a little bit. Because God knew that in the last days, the gospel would be taken to the world by the Gentiles. And that he knew that in the last days, his preserved word for the English people, the name of his son would be translated into the name J-E-S-U-S. -S. He knew that David would stand there to the giant and say, you come to me with spear and a sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yes. And his name today is Jesus. So anyway, you can take that and chew on it a while. I'm not telling you that's fact. But I, that, there, that there carries as much weight with me as it does the guy who said that it represents the first five books of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. I can prove that just as well as he can prove what he said. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So he stops and gets him five smooth stones. We said I brought five today. I didn't. <clears throat> and he takes them up out of the brook and he puts them in his shepherd's bag. <clears throat> And the Philistine came and drew near unto David. And the, bear that, and the man that bare the shield went before him. So, see, Goliath had a shield bearer. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. He despised him. He disesteemed him. He did the same thing to David as he had been doing to God's army, except David's going to react in a different way. You listening to me? See... The enemy, he is more concerned today, at least 90% of the time, Brother Rodney, to your reaction as he is anything else. He wants to see how you act yeah. when things look hopeless. Yeah. He wants to see how you act mm -hmm. when you face the giant. Mm -hmm. He wants to see how you act when everybody else is hiding in the foxhole and you're the only one that has enough courage to go out and meet the giant. Amen. Amen. <laughs> He wants to see how you act. So he's going to treat David the same way that he treated his brothers. The same way that he treated King Saul. The same way that he treated God's people, amen, that were hiding from him. It says that he looks at David and he sees that he's a youth, that he's ruddy, that he's of a fair countenance. In other words, he thought he was nothing. Same goes for you that went with your brothers, amen. This is what the Philistine says to David. Am I a dog? That thou comest to me with staves 
See, he sees his sling. And his, he sees what he's coming with him, yeah. coming at him with him. Yeah. He's just all he's got a stick. Yeah. And a sling and a rock. I mean, <laughs> what in the world are you? And that's the sin. And that's what the enemy will tell you. Yeah. What are you? Why you don't have nothing? Yeah. Then he waits to see how you react. Mm. Because if he can convince you you don't have nothing, yeah. you will run back and get in a foxhole with your brothers. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Oh, hell, you know how many times he's tried to convince this church, this ministry, this preacher, and you out there today that support this work, how many times he tried to convince it? You don't have nothing. Mm -hmm. Just to see mm -hmm. if we'd sit down and quit. Mm -hmm. If we'd stop, if we'd find us a foxhole, and it's not hard to find a foxhole and some brethren that are hiding in it today, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just to see what our reaction would be. So he treats David the same way that he treated his brothers. The same way that he treated the army of Israel. And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. In other words, he started invoking the name of his gods against David. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me. And I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air mm -hmm. and to the beasts of the field. Mm -hmm. Now see, now he waits. Let me see. That's what I told his brothers. And his brothers are hiding. That's what I told Saul. And he went into his tent and I ain't seen him in days. Saul was head and shoulders above every man in Israel. He should have been the warrior. He should have been the champion that was out there fighting. But fear had gripped his soul. Why, Brother Sleece? Because he trusted in horses. He trusted in chariots. He did not remember the name of the Lord. He forgot about how that God brought his people up out of the land of Egypt. He forgot about how that God split the Red Sea. He forgot about how that God had given Jericho into their hands. He forgot about the name of the Lord and the power that was there. So Brother Tyler, Goliath says, I've told him the same thing. Now let's see how he reacts. Listen to me. Verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. Carnal weapons. Mm -hmm. Carnal weapons. Army, you know, the military things. Yeah. But I come to thee not with carnal weapons. See, David realized that the weapons of his warfare were not carnal. It was, we're, not, we're not carnal. Amen. We're carnal. But we're not carnal. Amen. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So David said, I see what you got. I hear what you're saying. I see how big you are. But you're being overshadowed by how big my God is. Yeah, really. David said, I know what you come to me with, but I come to thee. Now remember what the psalm said. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but I will remember the name of the Lord. But I come to thee in the name of of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. So here stands Goliath, his weapons in hand. His experience is greater. Yeah. If you were standing back looking at this, and you're going to make a bet on who's going to win. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Here you have the champion, Goliath. Mm. He's decked out in his military array. He's got his he's got a, 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 a shield bearer. He's got his weaponry. He's got he's a champion. He's big and he's ugly. And here you have David. He's got a stick, a sling, and a few rocks. Who are you gonna put your money on? Wasn't gonna be David. How many people do you think hiding over there in Foxhole thought David was gonna come back alive? Amen. Yeah, not many. <laughs> not many. I said, well, that's it for our little brother. Yeah, He's really? fixing to be dead in a doornail. Yeah. Yeah. I knew one day his mouth gonna get him in trouble. Hey, hey, Amen. Hey, no. <laughs> I knew one day he's gonna he's gonna hang himself. Amen. Hey, Here he goes. Uh -huh. So he says, you come to me with a spear and with a sword and with weapons, carnal weapons. But I come against you today in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amen, whom thou hast defied. Mm -hmm. Then David says, this day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand. Why? Because he remembered the name of the Lord. And I will smite thee. Why? Because he remembered the name of the Lord. And take thine head from thee. Why? Because he remembered the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth mm -hmm. that all the earth may know that there is a God 
in Israel. Oh. So that all of the earth will know there is a God in Israel because by the actions of my brethren, by the actions of Saul, the world may doubt it. They may not know that he's real because they're, you're, they've been hiding from the devil. But today, they will know that our God is alive and that he's real. So that all the earth will know that God is alive. Oh, there is a God in Israel today. And you know how things went down. Amen. <laughs> Listen to this. And all the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with the sword. I wish you could get this this morning. And I've got about four more pages, but we're not going to get to them. I wish you could get this part right here. I quoted you a scripture a while ago that the Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. He said, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Here David stands years and years before Paul would ever write those words. He said that all of the assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with the sword or the spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into our hands. The battle is not yours today. I know you've spent all week with every strength that you've got. You've spent your life with every strength that you've got trying to fight it yourself. You spent a lot of the time hiding from the enemy. God wants you to know today that your weapons are not carnal. That your weapons are spiritual to the pulling down of strongholds. That there is a God in Israel. There is a God in His church today. Spiritual Israel, there is a God that is alive and all power is in His hands. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. Amen? If you're trusting in the world today, you're going to, be, you're going to fall and be defeated. If you're trusting in your own self today, you're going to fall and be defeated. If you're trusting in chariots, if you're trusting in horses, you will fall today because you're counting on a losing scheme. Amen? Men have tried to count on that. The Bible says, lean not to the arm of the flesh. Men have leaned to the arm of the flesh and fell on their face every time they tried. But if you'll trust Him today, if you'll trust His name today, what did, the, what did we read? We will, we will remember the name of the Lord. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we will remember the name of our Lord. So what's David do? It came to, came to pass whenever the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and he ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. You see, I wonder what kind of shock was on the face of this giant. Not that he thought he still couldn't take him. But he had stood there and beat his chest in front of David like he did his brothers and his brothers hid. He had stood there and beat his chest in the front of David like he did King Saul and King Saul hid. He finds this little ruddy, fair countenanced youngster that doesn't have a shield, he doesn't have a sword, he doesn't have a helmet, he doesn't have nothing. Instead of running and hiding, he's running toward me. Instead of the same reaction that his brothers did, he's acting different than the rest. I wonder what kind of look of shock was on the face of old Goliath as he walked toward David as he saw David running toward him. I wonder what kind of look of shock is on the devil's face today when he's done everything he can to beat you down and you keep getting back up. When he's done everything he can to intimidate you but you still trust in the name of the Lord. When he's done everything but kill you but you still trust in the name of the Lord. He's watching for your reaction today. He's going to treat you like He's always treated people. And He's going to see how you react to that. So David, the Bible says, ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slung it and smote the Philistine in his forehead. That the stone, see, he didn't need those. He didn't miss. Amen. He didn't miss. That the stone sunk deep into his forehead and he fell upon the face of the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a slain and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. So what's David do? He runs up there and he gets the sword of the Philistine. He picks it up and he chops off his head. He ran and he stood upon the Philistine 
and took his sword and drew it out of the sheath thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. So your reaction, your reaction decides what the enemy does next. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> Amen? Mm -hmm. When they see how you react, mm -hmm. when the enemy sees how you react, then they'll know how they're going to react. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because if you turn tail and run, mm -hmm. they're going to keep applying the pressure. Mm -hmm. They're going to keep doing what they do. Yeah. But the minute they see a glimpse of victory in your eyes, mm -hmm. the minute they hear a sound of victory in your voice, mm -hmm. the minute they see they have not intimidated you yeah. into the foxhole to hide, yeah. they said as soon as they saw their champion was dead, they ran the other way. Why? Because there was a man that trusted not in chariots, he didn't trust in horses, but he trusted in the name of the Lord. I'm closing. The Bible goes on to tell how that the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines. See, now they're chasing them. Mm -hmm. They've seen the victory that God wrought. And they chased the Philistines. And they spoiled their tents. The Bible says in verse 54 that David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem. But he put his armor in his tent. And when Saul saw that David, saw David go forth against the Philistine, now listen. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As thy soul liveth, O king, I cannot tell. Now you'll find a lot of different opinions on this too. Because Saul knew who David was. <laughs> David had played for Saul when he was tormented by spirits. Abner knew who Saul was. David, uh, Saul, uh, Abner knew who David was. Saul knew who David was. But as they stand there watching David out there fighting the giant, Saul looks over to Abner and he says, Abner, whose son is this youth? And Abner said, As I so live with, O king, I cannot tell. Now Saul and Abner might have had short-term memory loss. David had just left the tent of Saul. And you remember, he tried yeah. to put his armor on. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe, just maybe, they couldn't tell who David was because David didn't stand there in his own strength, That's right. in his own will. That's right. He was wrapped in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous runneth into it and are safe. When you get in the tower, they can't see you. They see the tower. When you come against the enemy in the name, he doesn't see how weak you are. He doesn't see how much flesh you're made out of. He sees that name, the name above every name, the name that at that name every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. He sees that name. We can stand here today and talk about all the names in the Old Testament for God. We can talk about Jehovah Jireh. We can talk about Jehovah Rapha. We can talk about uh, 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 Elohim. We can talk about all the different names and everything that they mean. But God made it easy for us today because He said, I've took one name and I've given all power over every name in heaven, every name in earth. I have taken all power and given it to one name, my son, Jesus. My son, Jesus. And when you get inside of that name, when you run into that tower, maybe, just maybe, they can't see you. The enemy doesn't see you. Maybe when he looks at you, he sees the blood. Amen. Maybe when he looks at you, he sees the name that you're wrapped up in. He sees the name of the champion. Amen. Goliath, his name was known throughout the land as being a champion. Oh, but God's name was so much greater. The Lord of Israel's name was so much greater. Not only had the Lord of Israel defeated armies 
with just a very few men, amen, a bunch of ragtail farmers, amen. He had split the Red Sea. He had cast darkness upon Egypt. He had sent the, the uh, he had sent the angel of death through the streets of Egypt and smite the firstborn, amen. He had sent the frogs. He had turned the Nile River into blood. He had split the Red Sea and delivered God's people when Pharaoh was closing in on their heels. This God was the champion. And that's what David said today. All the earth will see that our Lord, there is a God in Israel. He is the champion. He is the champion. So get inside His name. Use the name of the Lord today instead of your own strength. Mm -hmm. I come to you with spirit and a, you come to me with spirit and a sword, but I come to you in the name of the yeah. Lord. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth into mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. and are safe. I wish today when the world looked at us, they didn't see us. But they saw Him, His nature, His Word through us. I believe that when the enemy, right before the rock came in between eyeballs, he might have said, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Uh-oh. Yeah. This ain't going to be good. Mm -hmm. it's not. And when the devil sees your reaction, mm -hmm. when he sees that you don't give up, quit and sit down, mm -hmm. but you rise up in the name of the Lord, he might just say, uh-oh. Uh-oh. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. You come to me with the spirit of sword, with carnal weapons, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. That's our hope today. That is our hope today. Jesus, His name. The Bible says there's no other name under heaven whereby man can be saved. Amen. The Bible says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of Him. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of His calling and what riches of glory of His inheritance in the saints. And what exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe according to the working of the mighty power which He wrought in Christ when He raised from the dead and set Him at His own right hand in heavenly places. For far above all principalities, the power, the might, the dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in, the, in that which is to come, and hath put all things under His feet, and gave Him to be the head over all things of the church. His name is Jesus. His name is all-powerful. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Of things of, it says of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. In other words, the angels, man, and the principalities and wickedness, the powers of darkness have to bow at this name. Amen. Talking about all the names of God. The Bible says, for in Him, talking about Jesus, dwells the fullness of the Godhead. All of it is in Jesus. If you need peace today, it's in Jesus. If you need hope today, it's in Jesus. Face the enemy today in the name of the Lord and not in your own strength and your own might. His name is a strong tower. Run into it. Find your place of safety. Dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Jesus. Go through Jesus. He's the door. No other way. Someone else have something this morning before we go.